Innovation, as we all know it, is the most powerful force for change in the world. Innovation has made life safer, healthier, and more convenient. And it has even energized the world and its global market economy in unprecedented ways. Driven by innovation, the economy is 500% bigger today than what it was in 1960. In this feature, titled Go Beyond Boundaries, powered by OPPO Reno4 Pro, Sense the Infinite, where we talking past the needle to innovation and went above and beyond to create successful brands. We're going to be talking about their hard work on how they started and created growth companies and also talk about their ups and downs and how technology helped them go beyond boundaries to create remarkable companies. I have with me a few poignant names from India's innovation and entrepreneurial landscape. Firstly, we have Satish Kannan, the CEO and co-founder of Doxa, a digital platform with a curated list of 10,000 doctors on its online doctor consultation app. We also have Varun Agarwal, a CEO, author, and entrepreneur, and public speaker. Varun started his company, Alma Mehta, along with his friend, Rohan Malhotra, at the age of 22. Within three years, they grew the company from zero to a million in revenue, to a million dollars, that is. Finally, we have Arvind Sankar, the co-founder of Rapido, India's first and largest, fastest growing bike taxi company. Its app has been downloaded more than 25 million times and it is operating in 100 cities today. Welcome, gentlemen. Doing well. Doing well, Vishal. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Doing great, Vishal. Thanks for having us. I want to start with uh, Doc's app. Satish. Yes. What's the new normal for you? What's going on? And uh, give a little bit uh, of an introduction to the audience, please. So uh, I run uh, MediBuddy Docs app. We're one of the largest uh, digital healthcare platform, which helps patients talk to doctor on the video call and also get your medicines, get your lab test done and ha handhold you all through the healthcare journey. And uh, 25,000 patients on a daily basis. And uh, let's say from a healthcare perspective, three things that has happened fundamentally is one, the customer behavior has changed drastically. So they're doing a lot of orders for medicines, for labs, uh, through the platforms and through multiple digital platforms. That's one change in the ecosystem. And the second change in the ecosystem is doctors and hospitals also have got onto the healthcare or onto the digital platform. So in a way, the supply has to also onboard very effectively and uh, uh, and the third one is regulation has also changed very very fast in a way right in the industry a lot of these regulations were happening for many many years but everything has been accelerated in the last uh, let's say five five months now five to five months now actually and uh, that's sort of the quick one from the external environment and at office levels it's important See, earlier we used to have one office and thousand people sitting there right today at our office we have thousand team members but all of them are sitting in potentially thousand offices, right? Because everybody's house is office now. So all of these are challenges that is there, but I think uh, uh, we are all uh, gearing up for it. And uh, it's important for us to sort of rise to the occasion because we are in the healthcare space. It's all the more important that we provide uh, best services during these uh, uh, tough times. We'll come back to you in a bit and understand how virtual doctors, have, you know, work for patients. And, uh, you know, my favorite subject of mobility, you know, Arvind, we talked about how uh, mobility is going to change in the next 10 years. Yeah. But uh, can you tell our audience what's been going on with mobility? Because most of them are immobile, sitting at home. Hmm. What's happened with Rapido? What, what's going on? Uh, you were telling me that lots has changed. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Vishal. I think a very quick introduction for people who don't know about Rapido. Yes. Uh, we are essentially a two-wheeler ride-sharing platform. Uh, so we'll help you to move from one place to other uh, within a city. Uh, if you want to go fast, if you want to go for affordable and also convenient mode of transport, present in over more than 100 cities in the country. Uh, tier two is also a major focus, which majority of our business comes from. Huge opportunity that has opened up because public transportation has taken a hit. Uh, if you see a city like Delhi, Kolkata, Hyderabad, where uh, metros and buses are the major mode of commute, even though there are light sharing players, there is personal transportation. The biggest market in mobility is public transportation. Uh, so that has completely uh, gone for a toss. Uh, so that has been a completely new opportunity that has opened up because earlier the price, because of the price point, uh, we were not able to attract everyone from public transportation. And uh, number two is more about uh, logistics. 
so earlier, um, if people are not moving and people are sitting at home, so things has to come at home. Uh, and uh, because of the kind of fleet that we have, the kind of captains that we have on ground, they were able to enable home delivery for each and every business. So we have more than one 125% uh, recovery in terms of our logistics business. Uh, and uh, it's a completely new, uh, it's a completely new business opportunity that's emerged for yeah. us. You know, Varun, over to you. You know, I would love to know about, uh, you know, I'm a fan of the Alma Mater store, but you also have Mentor as a founder, right? You run two companies. Uh, what are your thoughts on the new normal at this point of time? Well, so my new, the new company that I'm running is at Tech. So the new normal is really working for us. Uh, the fact that people are staying at home and, and actually learning uh, is really like a godsend. Um, but uh, yeah, things things have actually, uh, I actually have never seen this sort of a trend, right? In terms of consumption of content. I've been creating content for the last 15 years, but I can tell you one thing. In the last 15 years, the amount of content consumption that I've seen and the content consumption that I've seen in the last three months is way greater than all of those 15 years combined, right? Great. So it's staggering at the way people are consuming content, the way they're reacting to content, the way people are learning at home, the way people are open to learning new things. Uh, well, it's not only a new normal, it's a new new to totally understand who this market is, who this audience is, what they want, how they want to learn. So yeah, it's been it's been a phenomenal learning experience the last three months. Just tell us about the tech platform, right? Uh, the content that you were creating. You said you're a content creator for a very long time. Yeah. You've also written a book, right? Yeah. I want to focus on, yes, during tough times, entrepreneurs do things like just like Arvind was just mentioning that he's at a 125% you know, a growth rate at this point of time. And in your case, EdTech has just hit the roof. Every person that I talk to wants to invest in EdTech at this point of time. Yeah. What happened in the new normal after March 23rd? What kind of strategies So the platform that we run is called Mentor. Basically, we enable students to learn from India's biggest mentors. So you can yeah. learn from like a Ritesh Agarwal or a Nitesh Tiwari or, you know, Amish Tripathi, so on and so forth. Uh, what happened in the new normal is now people have a lot of time. Right, they're all indoors, so they have a lot of time, and people yeah. suddenly realize they can learn not only from YouTube but a lot of ed tech platforms as well. Interesting, and you know, go, coming down to Arvind, Arvind, this is phenomenal, right? How habits change, how behaviors change. Uh, Arvind, this one you must have noticed this big time by training your uh, captains, you know, and who were the users at this point of time? Did you, did you see public come in and use the platform, uh, Rapido, or did you see more of these? Uh, Swiggies and you know the Zomatos take it to the platform. How did it work? Uh, so again, he, here there are two sides. One is our customers and one is our uh, in customers. Definitely, there is a huge change in the customers who used to come out uh, maybe before March versus who are coming out right now. Right. Like for example, one of our major target segments uh, also used to be college students going to college uh, and mm -hmm. youngsters who are. Uh, first two years of their jobs, uh, which used to be our major uh, customers. But right now, people are doing work from home, whoever possible, a lot of college are shut. So now these are not the customers who are coming out, but the customers who are coming out are um, maybe blue collared, gray collared customers, uh, say, for example, people who are doing home deliveries, people who are doing home servicing, uh, or for example, uh, government employees, bank employees. So it, a new segment of customers are coming out. So the way that we used to communicate about Rapido, the way that we used to acquire the customers have completely changed. Um, but uh, the good thing is, uh, for example, uh, the average distances have increased drastically uh, because public transportation, we are replacing a public transportation. Uh, what happened is like, instead of people just going for the last two, three kilometers, right now people are going for maybe seven, eight kilometers also, because now we are the alternative to public transportation. Uh, so those are a few things that definitely has changed. Um, and uh, coming to the captain side, uh, what happened because of this new normal is, is the job because people have lost jobs people there are a lot of salary cuts that are happening uh, so the supply that is available on ground is a lot more than what what we what needed based on the demand that we have uh, because there's a lot of livelihood that got impacted etc uh, so then we pivoting uh, to the to the logistics as a new business uh, helped us to gain the trust from the captains uh, and at least make some of the captains to make money uh, so that's where uh, obviously we, apart, earlier we were doing just food, 
uh, with the food aggregators. Um, but now we have gone beyond food uh, to grocery and every and enabling each and every uh, Kiranas to deliver, to do home delivery to the end consumer. Because earlier, um, every Kirana used to have one or two Chotu at their place and yeah. they used to deliver by themselves. But right now, everyone went to their hometown. So no one has that personal to do home delivery. So now we opened our home delivery network to every, every kind of uh, store uh, and that enabled to do home delivery for individual stores and also bigger aggregators. Uh, so that has given, uh, again, that's a major reason where our captains are still on our platform and making at least 60 to 70% of what they used to make uh, pre, pre, uh, no, um, pre March 28th. Okay. You know, this is interesting transformation. And uh, Satish, do doctors transform in this case? How easy is it for them to come onto your platform? I know the consumers would love to have virtual consulting. But what about the doctors? Uh, were you able to sign them up uh, in numbers uh, in the new normal? No, absolutely. So like I was telling, so one of the key uh, behavior changes that you have seen is higher adoption to such solutions and digital solutions and uh, digital ways among the doctors and the hospital communities. Mm. Right? So mm. earlier, a lot of doctors would say that I have a lot, lot of large practice, let's say in the offline, so I'm okay to do that. I'm already very busy there. Yeah. And I, I might give only like a very little time or no time for the big three. But in a way, it has turned tables, right? So now offline OPTs are very, very small. OPT is mm -hmm. outpatient. So offline OPTs are very small. So I think I would arguably say 100% uh, of customers in India now know online doctor consultation. And 100% of doctors have used one or the other platform. It cannot be this or that. It might even be WhatsApp or it might even be Facebook yeah. Messenger to talk to a customer and provide him the right advice. So digital adoption is in a way forced, right? It's like demonetization moment. In a way, demonetization for uh, is good for banking. Yeah. It's it's in a way good for, I mean, in, the, in, in one way, good for uh, uh, the uh, adoption part. So doctors have got onto it. And similarly with hospitals. Quickly, I want to touch upon, you know, you go to an average company today, they struggle around keyword research. Is that very important? How yeah. do you how do, how do you manage? How do you manage? I know Google it is all bidding and it is expensive yeah, I have very, for the smaller I have a Very simple system to understand who your yeah. target audience is, what your keyword yeah. can be, and what everything should be. Right? Basically, try to hit five hundred to thousand customers. Right? Okay. Hit five hundred to thousand customers. Pause all your marketing. Call yeah. each one and every one of those thousand customers. Create at least fifteen data sets. Right? And make sure out of those thousand customers, you personally, the entrepreneur, the CEO, the first, the first thousand customers, call them personally, get every sort of information that will help you figure out what your keyword should be. That will figure out what your Facebook strategy should be, your marketing strategy, your Instagram, your first thousand customers call each and every one of them. You pretty much know what your, your advanced thing is going to be unless okay. and, and until you really expand a lot because then things change a lot, but to start so, off, call everyone. So it's not something like where I just you know, bid on the word ed tech, right? That's not the way to go. In your no, case, what would you bid on? No, and plus you'll be competing with a lot of other companies who have a lot of other money to share, right? So I'll give you an interesting thing. Like, for example, for SEO, right? When we were doing blogs, we realized a lot of keywords for those blogs have already been taken by the big company. So for filmmaking, we basically figured, how do you color a film? Now, it's a very, very mundane or very weird topic to talk about filmmaking as well, how do you color a film? But we noticed there's not a lot of competition in that. So that will get a lot of people to end up on our platform, right? So you'll have to, I mean, I think the best creativity comes when you don't have a lot of money, right? Uh, <laughs> and I think that's why younger entrepreneurs pretty much learn a lot more than us. When, because once the, once the funding happens, then everything is just money, right? But the real exciting phase of any startup, I feel, is that free, free uh, Series A, because that's when you're figuring shit out, you're figuring things out, you're trying to hustle, you're trying to make sure that you can fix a problem that's unfixable. So I think any young entrepreneur that's watching this, you're in the best time of your startup. Satish. Yes. We were at the finance organization. How do you handle that? Primarily culture, be frugal and look at what you're spending. Uh, second point is all teams are actually trying to go behind the same goal, right? So finance mm -hmm. is also an enabling and not like a delimiting team, right? They're also telling that, hey, this is going to cost so much and you're going mm -hmm. to launch a new instance. You're going to launch a new thing. This is what the cost is going to be today. This is where we stand. This is our budget for the year. So I think it's more like a collaborative effort. So culture and uh, everybody is behind the same, uh, let's say, larger, uh, larger goal. 
and mm. uh, be an enabler in uh, in all the decision making and think creatively on all sides right so that is essentially the way to run it and it also starts when you but but we were rightly pointed uh, as a founder you should really understand how cash works how cash flows work and how you are supposed to do investments your turnaround time for the roi to reappear for you and if you spend 100 rupees today you might get it back but over a period of time so you need to know cash flow for that matter so okay. this is some of things but then all of this is learning i think as long as you are behind it you learn most of it so you know can you give us examples of how you push beyond boundaries to reach where you have today this is uh, open to all three of you you know since the program is also called beyond boundaries was there a situation where you had to cross a particular boundary to get to where you are this happens actually at all points of the journey of life right the journey of mm-hmm. the company itself so when we started out the concept itself was very new they used to ask you why would a doctor talk to a customer online and why would a patient really go online and talk to a doctor right so you push mm-hmm. the boundaries on the doctor i started with i personally met the first 40 doctors i went on a bike and then met all the doctors and got them on board today we have like 10000 doctors so you push the boundary initially to get the product market fit correctly you need to understand why and then second is you need to understand how do you do monetization right because mm-hmm. when you have a lot of this happening you need to figure out how people do monetization so it's push wrong ways to find out what how that happens then you also have to figure out how large teams work right so mm-hmm. when when you are like a 30 member team it's very easy because you know everybody everybody knows you and it's easy to instill culture but again mm-hmm. you have to push boundaries because 30 becomes 100 100 becomes 300 today i'm starting at 1000 right and majority of them i am not even hired so i would have hired half 50 people 100 people and they in turn would have hired the next 10 people right so it's important Correct. to figure out how to percolate culture so you need to keep pushing boundaries because that is necessary and you have to do new learnings every time because what i did yesterday i cannot do today so in a way you're pushing personal boundary you're pushing company's boundary and the guy who we hired yesterday he is good but when the company becomes bigger he has also pushed his level capabilities competence to because we want him to grow right and and uh, he is pushing his own boundary to say how i handle 10 member team today i'm handling 100 member team how i handle a budget of x rupees today i'm handling a budget of 10 x rupees right but then he is also pushing boundaries in a way so in a okay. way it is it is very important learning for all of us okay uh, arvin yes. for you the beyond boundary moment there's so many because regulations were against you right right yeah. there were incumbents It yeah. was very difficult. So, can you give us your beyond boundary moment, please? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so, I think when we are um, obviously when you are fighting with incumbents, uh, it comes with a huge. Um, I mean, it's huge challenge in terms of raising capital uh, and convincing people that there can be a third ride-sharing company uh, that can exist. Right? When we are talking about back in 2015, when we were launching, where. people have raised billions of dollars and you are just going and asking 1 million dollars so it looks like okay uh, what are, what are you going with what are you going to do with that right i think it started with that uh, and then when we started telling that we are not like any other ride sharing company it is much beyond that uh, in terms of if you see the market uh, presence right now for any cab hailing companies uh, the top 10 cities gives like 90% of their business uh, right but when we said that there are hundreds of cities in india where the public transportation is not existing and people can't afford for cabs uh, it's not it, no one has done that so for us it's a huge challenge uh, when initially we used to say that we but we had to do that and prove that and then raise money uh, right so that is number one and number two we are the only ride sharing company who does b2b logistics and also people transportation uh, right so it is a crazy mix of b2c plus b2b but it's a bottom line business for us uh, we we don't do b2b uh, for our top line it's more about uh, it increases the efficiency of the captain it makes captain choose our platform compared to multiple other platforms right so again initially it is just a story uh, but you have to go and convince maybe swiggy zomato to integrate to you and they pass on the orders to you and everything happens within our app um that is definitely second the third major thing is the kind of captains that we used to be on board uh, majority of our captains are part timers maybe like people like you and me when we are free we'll come and make money uh, so that kind of culture is not existed in india right uh, maybe in us people work for part time uh, people work in mcdonald's domino's to make extra bucks but here it's more about you have to work full time basis to make money from someone right so that 
change in cultural behavior uh, of captains and sitting behind a stranger. I mean, no, you never sat on a two-wheeler behind a stranger. You might have sat behind your father, behind your father or brother, but never behind a stranger. So everything is like uh, proving, proving things. Uh, it definitely takes time for every uh, every push that you have to put in. Uh, but definitely the kind of uh, once you prove that, then it's just a 10x. Uh, it takes time to maybe uh, for some things to build, but once you build that, it's just an X. And that's how uh, we have to push it at each and every time to make sure that uh, we exist in the market and we just don't die. I mean, the difference for one organization versus other organization is one guy gave it up and then he died and then you were, you were just fighting there. Uh, and that differentiation is you existed and they didn't exist. Uh, and then- So gives- the key is persistence for the beyond boundary moment. You persisted. For sure, uh, you strongly believe. Uh, sometimes your belief is the uh, it can help you, but sometimes even if you strongly believe, you you will just try to give it up. Uh, but you just need to perceive. Sometimes it's just months, uh, but it is sometimes it's years. I think. Uh, Great. Great. Varun, you you've done two companies. So did you have a moment like this, a beyond boundary moment? I've been doing this for 12 years now and I think the only beyond boundary <laughs> moment I think I know is enjoy life. I think we're so consumed by this. I mean, I can tell you, show me an entrepreneur who's not obsessed with his company day and night and I'll show you who's not an entrepreneur, right? We're yes. obsessed 24-7. We're just thinking, breathing, living our startup. Uh, there's no time to read books. There's no time to travel. There's no time to do a lot of things, right? Especially when you're in the early stages, right? Uh, I think once that stops, that's when the real growth stops. When you're not reading enough books, when you're not traveling enough, when you're not learning from just regular people, or when you're not hanging around people who are not entrepreneurs, right? And when you're not having enough me time, right? So if we are not enjoying life and we're not really living life while doing this, then none of this makes sense to me, right? So for me, it's also important to have a, a, a good life along with this because having a startup is great, but it's so obsessive. You get so consumed by it that it leaves you little time to do anything else. And that's what I'm trying to balance now. It's, it's, it's fantastic. So you're you're saying you've that. changed. You've taken a chill pill and say nothing is more serious. Build, I'm but trying, don't take it seriously. Yeah, I'm trying to. I, I'm not saying I've been able to do what I'm just saying. I'm trying to work on this because it's very hard. You're, you're always obsessed, right? And how, no, what would you advise entrepreneurs? I mean, if they get stuck in a moment, what would you advise them? Oh, like Arvind said, persistence, right? They're, you exist, somebody else won't. That's the only difference that will make, right? And I think uh, investors see a lot of value in that, that you're willing to stick it out. You're willing to, you know, and also just one thing, if you want to be an entrepreneur, right? Make sure you have the appetite for entrepreneurship. Idea does not matter at all. Are you ready to face rejection every day? Are you ready to like go through highs and lows every day? Are you ready to face, uh, are you ready to fix 100 problems every day? Are you ready to face some of these issues every day? Are you ready to face employees quitting for no rhyme or reason every day? Are you ready to suddenly your platform breaking or something is always breaking. Something is always breaking every single day. If you are ready to handle that level of, of breaking, that level of uh, anxiety, that level of uncertainty, you don't know what your next one year is going to be. You don't know what your next five years is going to be. Only if you believe in all of this and you can handle all of this, then be an entrepreneur. It's okay. the most uncertain life that you will ever live. Okay. Sticking with you, I want to ask you, this is my last question for all three of you. In all this, we're digital and IT becomes so important, you know, and some people talk about big things like AI. How has tech helped you scale? Let's be minimalistic or is there a maximum approach to tech? I think Arvind and uh, Satish should be probably more uh, uh, for this question because they're doing this with tech. Yeah. You should tell me, go on, Varun, you, uh, you so, must have done something with tech. Yeah, no, so tech, tech is obviously solving the basic problems, but we're trying to solve more about the behavioral problems, right? It's the content problem. And, um, and for us, Netflix is a very good model. So tech to collect data and make sure your content is better, right? So get enough data to understand what your viewers want to watch, make better content, and ensure people actually complete the content. Because ultimate objective should be that I, I create value for my customers, but eventually I don't spend much on acquiring customers, like I mentioned, right? So if I can get my customers to be my biggest evangelists, right? Then then I'm then I've built something something substantial. But, so you're saying tech is stable stakes today for you. Yeah. It is there. You've got to focus more on the experience and the data. Yeah. Correct. For us, that is that is the most important focus. Tech tech is basically okay. making sure things work. Okay. How about you, Arvind? Yeah, uh, I mean definitely for us. 
it's, it's a lot more core what we are, uh, even though it looks like Rapido is more on operations mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, but unless you have things in place uh, from the technology side, you just can't scale. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes how can you make your cost less is actually if you are, your product should, uh, should also look at efficiency. Mm-hmm. It should just not do a lot of things. For example, um, say during the, after in the last three, four months, uh, where a lot of captains can't come to your office and then get onboarded. So how do you get onboarding at a remote locations? Like you can't open offices in each and every city. When we are in hundreds of cities and then planning to go to multiple cities more. So there's no point of launching uh, offices in each and every smaller cities if the cities are very small. Then still, how can you onboard your captains? Yeah. Uh, so it started from there to how do you do payments to your captains? Because they make here, they come for uh, part time. So I am coming here maybe for for some hundred or two hundred rupees that I need to spend at the end of the day. So how do you do payments for them? Um, so it starts with all those things. Uh, I mean, in terms of from onboarding to the entire customer experience to the payments of our customers and our captains. Um, and uh, right now, I mean, especially when we are scaling, data becomes super key uh, because. Beyond a point, uh, what you have to do, once you have a lot of features that you already have, then it becomes how do you efficiently build that? How do you make money on each and every transaction? How do you make sure your uh, burn is less? So everything is possible only if you read the data in the right way. Uh, And people have to take decisions. When you are in hundreds of cities, you can't have hundreds of people taking decisions to your organization. There has to be some automation that has to happen where decisions are taken by yourself. That can only happen if you read the data well. Uh, so now it's more about uh, data and engineering uh, and definitely there has to be someone who should say what the customer needs uh, and that's where our operations and the product team comes into and then uh, make our product beautiful. Okay. From there. Quickly tell us how many people do you serve because that's that's how technology scales, right? How many yeah. people do you serve? Yeah, so uh, more about uh, if you see in March, uh, we have more than um, three, four million customers who transact with us uh, on a monthly basis. That's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Satish, I think for you, uh, the scale is the video should be able to handle uh, things well because it's a doctor and patient relationship. So for you, technology becomes core too. Correct. Correct. Now, fundamentally, you have to look at how does the delivery of that particular service happen? There are a lot of services where the booking happens online, the delivery happens offline. Uh, But there are a lot of services where the booking or the delivery itself happens online. So for us, we have multiple parts about it because doctor consultation is completely online delivered, right? like the video call that we're doing now. So you need to have ensure that you're able to scale. Uh, and, and we also should understand that the uh, internet quality are all not so great, right? We might have very good Wi-Fi connection, but a lot of them would be using their phones and 3G and 4G. And so we need to be able to understand this uh, from a bandwidth perspective. That's on the delivery part for a consultation. But when it comes to medicines, when it comes to labs, when you, you, you can even find hospitals which provide COVID and COVID related solutions through the platform. So you need to have a lot of offline ability to track, manage all of this during this uh, pandemic times. So it's important that in in a way, technology is like the bread and butter for us. But how do you look at it is from a customer point of view, it looks like magic, right? He just presses it and it works. So where you have a software for this, you have a server for that, there is a doctor side, there is an operations team, there's a dashboard, there's a customer support. A lot of this happens. And second reason for a lot of technology needed is now people are not working in the same location, right? So earlier I could talk to you like this, I could pass on a paper to you, I could say, bring, come together, let, let's look at this data together. But now everybody is at every different place. So in a way that only way to like scale, I say, you know, it, it's very easy to actually have all people in one room under one flow and then do a lot of work because coordination is far easier. But now yeah. to do this across the spectrum is, is tougher. That's why technology is like super critical and uh, you need to continue to invest in that. And I, I, when you start, it is stable stakes. After that, the way you use it actually helps you grow from stage one to two to let's say 10 and potentially to 100. And, and that is essentially where after a certain extent, you need to do a lot of automation. And that is when AI and all comes into the picture because you have a lot of data to crunch, understand, process, and uh, deploy a lot of solutions. So uh, that also scales with time. And, and the number of engineers, you start with one engineer, two engineer, three engineers, then you have like 100 engineers. So that also scales with time, but uh, that's the bread and butter for a lot of uh, solutions in the future also, because more and more people would stay within their houses or, or we don't know how the new normal is going to be. 
say 12 months from today a lot of things would go digital earlier i used to actually do a lot of flights right because i have to meet my customers doctors hospitals across the country but you are doing zero flights now <laughs> so see the difference right so in a way then it is going to be digitally led solutions you will actually have a edge it will have a lot of offline online in a way i call it digital something is physical for sure you can't change it something is digital but uh, digital will be a like a strong proposition and you need to continue to invest in the technology piece for uh, for the new normal for the new world it's going to be in a way part physical and part digital and you need to invest in that so thanks uh, guys for being on this beyond boundaries program you know i would suggest that everybody who's watched this go check out docs app if you're a doc if you're a doctor sign in if you want a virtual treatment go check out docs app if you want a ride share you go to uh, rapido get your essentials from rapido too and then you know if you really want to learn from a celebrity then go to mentor thank you guys again and have a great time and we'll see you soon oppo has also carried out an inspirational beyond boundaries campaign with oscar award winning filmmaker and ceo of shikya entertainment gunit monga which broke records with an emotionally charged narrative to raise awareness and empower efforts towards educating the girl child we will be sharing the link in the description go check it out